Thank you for joining, Lauren. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. My first podcast. First podcast. You know, it's a big deal. Oh, wow. I left my... Um, <laughs> now that I realize I left my keys in the door frame, which for some reason is kind of not a good idea. Well, it's not a good idea to do on this street. Have you seen the craziness that happens on the street? No, but it is pretty dangerous out there because I did fall into a hole right outside your house. What exactly happened? And, wh- and why was I, I, why was I not in the vicinity? Still, I have, I'm going to have a scar, I think, honestly. So what happened? And I don't know where I was. I was, um, I wasn't inside. You were inside, but you weren't <laughs> hanging out with us. It was I, us. Who even was it? It was like me and Renessa and Griffin and someone else. I think some of my friends and we had gone out and we came here um, to drop Griffin off before me and Renessa went home. And as I was like getting out of the car to say goodbye to everyone, like I was literally driving. I wasn't drinking, not doing anything. I just fell into this giant sinkhole (laughs) right outside your house and it was very embarrassing and bleeding horrible it's very why was it embarrassing because i just like ate shit basically for like no reason just out of nowhere nothing and it just was not fun I'm just no wondering why it was embarrassing. Was it like in front of an audience of people? Yes, and it was in front of everyone. That there it was, was everyone. Okay, it was in front of like <laughs> four or five people. That's not that embarrassing. It's not like a, it was in on live TV. I mean, yeah, I guess. Were they close but, friends that you fell in front of? Um. Yes. It just. It just was something that was unnecessary to happen. I. I didn't enjoy that feeling. Yeah, it, of yeah. embarrassment. Um. It was. It, it would never be necessary to fall into a ditch in front of someone's house. But yeah, yeah. Obviously. Um. I just wasn't expecting to take such a tumble. I'm usually a cautious person. So. What happened? What was the agenda that night? What was something that was like out and about partying? We went out in Venice. Um. We went to Winston house and we went somewhere else. I can't really remember, but we were out for like quite some time. Um, the reason I'm asking is because I clearly wasn't a part of all of this. Yeah, I don't really remember why you weren't there or where we came from or what was going on, but that's what was happening that day. Um, are you, you didn't, you're from, where are you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Like your whole life you lived there? My whole life. I was born in Atlanta and went to elementary through high school. Same house, same everything, all in Atlanta. I was homeschooled for a little bit. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. In wait, my, what, what age range? My sister was kindergarten through eighth grade. And I was, I think, second through fifth grade. So only a few years, but then the rest like Atlanta public school. Why the difference between you and your sister, first of all? Um, Well, we started being homeschooled the same year. So I was in second grade when she was in kindergarten. So we started together and then I just ended up going back to school. Um, But why? Why was I homeschooled? Why were they like sitting there? The parents were like, you know what, Lauren... Lauren, you go back to be with the people and you other sister, you stay in the well, my, basement. My sister is very athletic. So she mainly stayed homeschooled because she's playing volleyball and tennis a lot. And they wanted her to keep doing that. And I was not. So oh, they're like, I'll go to the public school. Yeah. Public school is pretty good, though. I had the best time in high school <laughs> ever. Like I went to all grade schools with the same people, basically like elementary, middle, high, all the same friend group. So it was kind of like the best setup. I had an amazing experience in high school. It was like 2000 people. So it was pretty like- That's legit size. high school. Yeah. It's like high school in a movie, you know, like a yeah, like high 500 school. a grade or so. So it was pretty legit, but I loved it. It was so fun. And I had this friend group, there was like 12 of us and they're all actually flying out here for my birthday next month. So I'm very excited. Oh my God. It's going to be Atlanta high school as crazy as it's been made out to be. I used to date a girl who went to high school in Atlanta. Oh, really? Do you know what high school? No. Okay. You'd phone her in. Oh yeah, we could phone her in. Probably not Um, going to just for the sake of this really like 
random answer, but yeah, I just heard it was it's crazy. Unnecessary. Heard it was crazy, and you you like you just like are more grown up there than kids in other places. Yeah, it's it get, can get a little crazy. I'd say there was definitely like a lot of fights, a lot of this, a lot of that, like a lot of stuff going on. But overall, super fun. We kind of got to like do whatever we wanted. There was not many rules. I if didn't want to go to class I just wouldn't go I would just take myself to and from and you could do like this dual enrollment thing where you could go to classes at Georgia State which like the Georgia State campus near me is like not the greatest but I just would like not go to high school half the time and then just go to the Georgia State campus so it was pretty fun what would you do at the Georgia State campus I took college classes for college credit but like, why was it so loosey goosey over in Georgia? Like, I didn't, I didn't think that instead of like AP classes, you go here and you're like taking them at the actual college. Yeah, but I'm saying like you said you wouldn't want to go to class, you wouldn't just go. But then you're like, oh, I'm gonna do AP college courses. Yeah, well, I mean, like our high school, you could just kind of go, you could take whatever, do whatever. It was pretty up in. Were the you end. one of those? Were you the oh, I don't study for anything, and then you get like a 98 type? Were you that? one be that person no i definitely was the get a 98 on everything person but i wasn't just naturally good i had to actually like put in a lot of effort but i was for sure a try hard all of high school like school wise extracurricular i was a cheerleader the whole shebang so it was fun so then university of arizona if then i went to university why? of arizona why well, they gave me a full ride, which was very nice. And my grandparents are in Arizona and I always wanted West Coast. So it was just kind of like, that's where I landed on. And what happened? It just was honestly too big of a school. Like it's 50,000 students versus Pepperdine, which is 4,000. So it's completely different. I mean, I was in giant lecture halls, which I didn't like. It was just... There's too many people, too much going on, and it was just hard. So I still wanted to stay West Coast, so I came out here and then did four years at Pepperdine. So like, what was that first year? Like, you show up at Arizona, mm-hmm. like August freshman year. What's going on over there? It's like 120 degrees. It's miserable, very hot, tons of parties, but it's different than partying here I guess it's more rave sort of vibe it's everything's EDM this and that it's like very different because I was used to Georgia where you go to UGA or something and it's like live music at a bar and here it's crazy EDM music so it's just a very big difference that I wasn't expecting and I thought I'd be fine but then I realized this isn't I prefer smaller so I switched how did you arrive on Pepperdine, Malibu? Did you know anyone? Or you like visited and you're like, I'm um, Zoe 101. Uh, like what? That's the first thing everyone says is Zoe 101. But I actually didn't know anyone at Pepperdine. I didn't know one person. I just went on a weekend trip with my mom. And like, I'm pretty sure you can't really transfer to UC schools as a sophomore. You kind of have to wait till junior year or that's what they prefer. So that kind of eliminated a lot of the schools for me. And then I just, Pepperdine, obviously it's gorgeous. It's Malibu, it's on the water and it was small and I loved it. So that was the beginning and been here ever since. So I love it. What a, uh, so like any, do you see any crazy shit at Arizona? Uh, Chaotic stuff. Nothing like truly comes to mind. Just. It's just a bunch of kids like being ridiculously crazy and immature, but nothing. Honestly, I didn't see anything out of this world. It was, I was pretty to myself. I wasn't like going crazy at all the parties or anything. Did you ever go crazy at the parties? Not really. Yeah, it doesn't see, yeah. Not really. You in this library, it sounds like? Always in the library, constantly studying. You know, I'm a total bookworm. (laughs) I knew it. I could tell. Honestly, that's the vibe I get. It's total yeah, bookworm. bookworm. That's my initial impression. Yeah, that's what everyone says. Okay. So then you go and then like you show up there and then you become like, like 
what do you, what do you do? What do you do when you show up to Pepperdine? Like, how do you, how do you become a, like a normal student there after like transferring? Like, what is that like? Um, well, I lived in the transfer dorms. Oh, was, did she get rowdy in the transfer dorms? It actually was a little rowdy. So Pepperdine is like very Christian, dry campus, everything, girls in one dorm, boys in another. But the transfer dorm, it was like the first time they ever kind of did it is there was girls and guys in the same dorm, not in the same suites, but in the same dorm, same floor, everything. And it definitely, like, there was always some sort of commotion. And that was the last time they ever did that was my year. But the transfer dorm was not that fun. But I joined a sorority right away. So I think that's how I, like, got in the loop of everything. And then, yeah, it's pretty... So sorority, like, what's the deal with that? Why is it so, like, dramatic? And why is there stuff just, like... (laughs) So why much. is there drama it, at, from what i've heard there's drama I like mean, why is that always the case like why can't like what why is there drama well i wish there wasn't always but i think sometimes when you just get a bunch of girls together it, it can just get a little rowdy and cause commotion but overall my sorority experience was fabulous i met like a lot of my best friends in mine and i even went to a wedding this weekend Um, for a girl in my sorority and she married like a guy in the fraternity I was friends with and so I got to see like a lot of people I don't normally see but um, I am it was great overall I had a wonderful experience what have you noticed that like in seeing girls groups of girls hang out versus groups of guys hang out just how they act generally like do you see similarities that are just look different because of the way they express them or do do you like what have you noticed? Um, I mean, your friend group's like a little different. I feel like, um, from other guy friend groups or just from girl groups. Obviously. Um, from different girl. I mean, it's different with guys because I don't know. It's it, my friend group. What I don't even really remember the question. I cannot even remember. What is the, what are the differences you notice between how oh. groups of guys hang out and groups of girls, you know, hang out? Um, with guys, it's like a little more casual. I, I would say with girls, it's like very pre-planned, like let's be here and let's do this. And this is what we're going to do. Like we kind of have a more set in stone where I think with guys, it's a little more like whatever, go with the flow. That's a little different, but I feel like it's honestly, um, pretty similar. There's not like any major differences. Um, my, I mean, most of my girlfriends aren't very dramatic. We're all super fun. Like we do whatever, whenever we all invite each other to other things. Are you not believing this? I like how you think that my group of guy friends is more dramatic than you. You guys are like a little, I would say like a little more than typical. How so? I don't know. I just feel like, oh, there's always something, but. Oh, <laughs> like what? I don't know like nothing specific it's just you guys are very I guess the difference is you guys have known each other forever you are a very tight-knit group you've been friends since elementary school I would say for most of you guys versus like my friend group here is people I've only known the past few years so I guess that is like part of the reason why it's a little different is you kind of you guys you guys are family versus I've only known um my friends out here for a few years because i've only been here a few years it's a little different your your friends that are visiting from back home they're like your version of that yes my friends that are visiting are back from back home are just like that and i would like describe our groups as the exact same like when we're back home we've just had so much life experience together that we kind we just like know everything about everyone and and how we interact and everything like without saying their name like Describe the most chaotic one from back home. Oh gosh. I mean, my friend group was a little dramatic always. Um, but no one in part, I mean, we were all just fun. Like we all in high school started going out super early, like age 15, I would say. And going out in Atlanta, you go to the bars, like, and you sneak out of your house and you, like, 
go to Buckhead and we, but we all did that. Like it was just kind of Buckhead. Buckhead is like a, um, like a nice, it's not as nice anymore, but it's like a nice area, um, outside of Atlanta and it's like where all the bars are. So that's where everyone goes. So like, what was the, did you get, you all get fakes in high school? That- yeah. I mean, literally at you age, at age, you have, everyone, everyone did at probably at like age 15. I remember I got mine through an order my sister did with her college friend mm-hmm. went off to UCLA as a freshman. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. I was the first one of all the guys to get the, the fake. Yeah. So I was the first one to go and try to buy it. It was, it was, it was a badge of honor that I wore for a little while. It definitely, since we got them so young, it got a little crazy when we were almost 21, like near 20. And then our fake ID says like 26 because we've had it for five years. So that was kind of an issue later on, but. Um, Have you ever gotten one taken? Uh, I don't think so. Um, no. I feel like guys get them taken more than girls. I think for us in Atlanta, it really wasn't that strict. You kind of just had to give them something and they weren't like too fed up about it. So why do people say that like going out and about in Atlanta as a high schooler is just more crazy, is crazier? Is it really there much merit to that? Is it that, does it seem like it's the Um, place where people grow up faster, so to speak? Yeah, I I think there's just a whole, but like a whole different bunch of people, different walks of life in Atlanta, like a bunch of, a bunch more going on than LA, I'd say. I don't know. LA. What do, just, mean, what do you mean more going on? Like, there's like a variety. There's like rednecks and there's like, yeah. Few. Is it like rednecks, a lot of rednecks? No. I mean, I, that's people. It's either. Like North Georgia. Maybe is that like the country, like what's the difference between like, were you like in more of like a normal suburb as there's, opposed to like the country outskirts? There's that was a the, huge difference from Atlanta versus like the state of Georgia. So it kind of depends if I tell someone I'm from Georgia, sometimes they just like assume farm life. Like I'm from the middle of nowhere. But if I say Atlanta, that's like a huge city. Like it's very metropolitan. And I was outside of the city, like in a, re- in a regular typical suburb. Um, But yeah, there's not a lot of rednecks where I'm from or in Atlanta, that's more like North Georgia, South Georgia, getting kind of close to Florida, um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Cause I had this fraternity brother slash teammate in college named John Allen. Uh huh. You don't, don't know John Allen? I don't. Yeah, probably not. Uh, he's from like somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Georgia, you know, missing a tooth for like two years. Didn't wow. care. Yeah. That's- there's a lot of that. A lot of you. You see a lot of people with missing teeth. I'm. I'm sure if I went to South Georgia, there'd probably be a lot. But what's like the the lamest part of Georgia? Like, what's the place around? What did you have like a rival high school that you didn't mess with? That you were like people from over there. They're like this this town of uh, this high school. Like there are rivals or like we, we have beef with them. Like, you know, it's a rival football school, you know, that's, I mean, thing. yeah, we had, we had rivals. It would be like, I went to Dunwoody high school and our wait, rival wait, what high school Dunwoody. It's kind of a weird name. Yeah. It's okay. a little weird name. Dunwoody Wildcats. And we, our rival was Shambly. So, but we didn't even have our own football stadium. So our football stadium, we would use Shambly. So it would kind of be like both of our home games. It was not an ideal setup. Like we, our school just didn't have money for a football field or anything, but um, there definitely would be tension and there would be like cheer offs, you know, you see in the movies, it kind of was that in real life where like a girl would like do back handsprings into the other team and kind of like show her a little attitude. And like, we would wait, wait, you would go back and forth between the yeah, two teams. Back and Were forth. Were you the one who did the flips? Um, I was not. That was one. I could, I was not causing any of the drama. That was no, for you that do the flips though. I could you. do back handsprings, but not flips. So you could go run and do like the, the how many back handsprings? One. I was oh, not. Oh, that's lame. Yeah, Sorry. it is pretty that's lame. I I'd probably be able to do at least like three if I. There was girl, I mean, there was a whole different variety, but everyone could do back handsprings, but then some girls had like 
back tucks and full so stuff. I wasn't on that level. Paying attention, were people paying more attention to the tear offs with the drama than the football game ever? You think? People, I think, paid more attention to the cheerleaders because our football team was horrible. I think my senior year, we didn't win a single game. We were like 0-20 or something. Sounds like Malibu High. Yeah, it was uh, It was pretty disheartening because every time we would cheer, we just like knew we were going to lose. So it was kind of like, a, you know, but yeah, that was football and cheer in high school. Yeah. Well, um... You didn't have any of your Diet Coke, by the way. Oh. Should I have some now? I mean, sure. Oh, if, if I you dropped want. the coaster. Um, we both have bonded over Diet Coke, which I How think. How did you great. get into Diet Coke first? Do you remember? It was like a pivotal thing. My dad always drank Diet Coke, so therefore I did. Um, I don't really know how I got into it, but I think it tastes better than regular Coke and it's just so satisfying sometimes. I think just knowing that it has zero calories too is Makes really- Makes you feel a little better. It does. No, well, I mean, that's a big re- I, I would never drink that if that was regular Coke, like even that. Yeah, because then you just think of all the sugar and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm, like, oh, I'm just Even though we're drinking. drinking chemicals like anyways. Yeah, so chemicals over calories is what- I chemicals, kind of agree. Chemicals I'd, over calories. I'd rather know that I'm putting like- something suspicious with zero calories in my body versus like a giant thing of sugar. So. Right. Yeah. What do you think about how it, that pertains to alcohol? I wish alcohol didn't have, I wish there was zero calorie alcohol. Wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, I've never really like thought about that aspect of it, but I think as long as you're getting like tequila sodas or you're just keeping it as low cal as possible, you'll be fine. The issue is when you start like drinking wine, it's too much sugar, you get headaches or like any sort of like Coke or Sprite, anything like that. That's when you're gonna like come into some issues, but I don't drink that many uh, vodka sodas that I think it, that's like genuinely affecting me, but I agree, it, it could get crazy. You know, is any one of your friends, you don't have to specify it, who just said like, they order the stupidest drinks ever. You're like, why do you order these drinks? I mean, uh, definitely myself. Like if I see something that sounds interesting on a menu, I'll order it. And then I'll be like, wow, that's so sweet. Why did I do that? Like I can only have one, but um, if I'm at a nice restaurant and they have a fun drink, I'll always, I'll always try that. Cause more than likely I'm only going to get one drink there anyways. So I, I would like to just try the fun one see how it is what about how girls perceive what guys order on like a date is that a big factor like what if a guy orders a weird ass drink and you're out and you're like this motherfucker orders some like i don't know something that just it's weird um yeah i mean i would take that into consideration what someone's what would ordering. be weird for a guy to order on a first date like a weird drink that's just like like a huge one with like a huge demonstration of something with like an umbrella in it or something that comes with like a sparkler, like something that's making a scene or that's really dramatic. I th <laughs> think imagine just, yes. guy, first time meeting a guy and he has a sparkler drink, like a club. Yeah. Or he orders thing. like a frozen, like some sort of weird, like <laughs> pina colada or something like, well, I don't even think anyone would do that, but if they did, I I would Can think that. I have a pina colada. <laughs> I think that would be super. <laughs> that would be suspicious. so funny. I think I was like, I'll have a gin or what, gin something. Yeah. yeah. I'll have a stock oh, daiquiri. You know how the restaurants have the drinks that they put the little bubble on the top? Like they. Oh, the yeah. Little, it's like a special. Little it's, like a birth, it's like a birthday event, something. That, like, Wait, you already finished the whole Coke? I did. <laughs> I never. Wow. Okay. I mean, I'm. I need lead. to catch up. I drink. I do this every day. Well, I think if you got one of those drinks that has the little bubble wand on top, I would be like, "All right, that's kind of interesting." Yeah, the bubble wand. I mean, you I ever tried should, boba? Yeah, I do. I love boba. I love getting Thai tea boba. Really. Really. I guess I swear to believe you. Why? It's good. I, I, I like those, Thai tea boba what are those things, though? Tapioca. What are they really though? Tapioca balls. Like what is it though? Like 
tapioca isn't that like a I don't even know what it is. Like, it's even, thing. It's, you think it's worse than what's in the Diet Coke chemical? No. I think this is for sure worse. This is the worst thing, probably. It's so bad, probably, you know? It's so bad, but then you see those people that, like, live to 120 or something, and then they're like, how'd you do it? Oh, I drink a Coke every day. And so then I'm like, we're fine. Do you think about... It's a big difference to live to be 100, to be 100 and to be between 80 and 100 that's 20 that's a long ass time 20 years is a yeah. long ass time i don't think i want to live to 100 or above that's kind of crazy because what are i mean it depends how well i'm doing but it kind of seems miserable what, what kind of old person do you want to be like if you if you had to you know just be an old person straight up like what what would that's your vibe kind. be what would your um i think i'd be a pretty chill I mean, gosh, I don't know. I don't want to be in a nursing home or anything like that. Like, I hope someone's going to take care of me and like wheel me around town at least. <laughs> I want to be going to everything still. So, gosh, I don't know. But it definitely scares me. I don't want to be old and like immobile and not doing anything in my life. Yeah. I think I'd be like a cool old dude. Yeah. Yeah. Like a surprisingly cool dude. Like I'd look like one. But then, like, I do a little, like, joke telling or storytelling. And they'd be like, whoa, like, kind of cool, dude. Do you think you'll have a lot of grandchildren? Or what are you thinking? I'll probably have a few. Yeah. Like, a really cool grandpa that would, like, sneak you sneak you candy. Yeah. Like, like not, like, a candy. crazy amount. But, like, just a little bit to be like, hey, I'm cool. Like, here, like, I'm giving you candy when you're not supposed to have candy. Like, before yeah. dinner. Or, like, that kind of cool grandpa. Yeah. You know what I mean, I mean, I'm saying that's one of my, one of my grandpas used to do that. He used to be like, I got you some candy and it would just be like a piece of candy, but it would be you presented that. as like this super special, like, oh, you're not supposed to have candy, even though it wasn't that big of a deal, but it was a big deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you think you'd be like an old grandma with like butterscotch in her purse kind of vibe. My grandma literally has butterscotch in her purse and these like weird strawberry things. That's they not going to be little, me. They always have those little weird candies. Yeah. I don't think... Well, I hope I'm not doing that, but I think I'll be the grandma with the candy as well. Or my grandma always like slips a $20 bill. Like when I leave or she's like, here, just, just go or whatever. And just go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, just get out of my fucking house. Yeah. So I'll probably do that as well. 